Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next tutorial in the Geometry Dash series, coding it in Java. So uh, last tutorial what we did was we just cleaned up some stuff, made sure that everything is working. We're in the level editor scene now. We have two scenes, level scene and level editor scene. If you haven't watched that, check that out. It's important, <laughs> just like all the previous videos. So in this one, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding a grid, uh, some grid lines that when we're placing objects into the level editor scene, we'll know where they go. And then we are also going to implement a moving around feature so that we can move around our scene, clicking the middle mouse button and then moving around from there and everything. So let's do that real quick. First thing we're going to need to do, new class. This is going to be called grid. This is just going to contain the grid. And we're going to say this extends component. And that is good. Uh, we're going to need to Im import that. So we'll import that. And then we'll go down here, we'll say at override public void draw and then we'll take in graphics 2d object g2 and then we'll hit alt enter import that and we'll do an at override public void update double delta time that's good um so one of the things we're going to want to do with this grid is we're going to need a reference to the camera so we will say camera camera and then hit alt enter and then we'll say public grid and let's actually also take in a public int width and height, or we'll say grid width, uh, grid height. And this will be like the individual tiles in the grid. And then inside of here, we'll say this dot camera equals window dot get window. And once again, <laughs> let's change this real quick to just graphics duty. Say window dot get window. Oops. And then we'll hit alt enter to import that and then we'll say dot camera dot get current scene dot camera there we go and we'll say this dot grid width grid height equals constants dot and we'll say tile height this dot grid width equals constants whoops constants dot tile width and then we'll go ahead and import this and then we will go to our constants and add in those real quick. So we'll say public static final int tile width equals 42. Public static final int tile height equals 42. And these are just values that um, are from the sprite sheets that I have to. Uh, each sprite will be 42. We'll actually be zooming the camera in and stuff too, which will be nice. Um, let's go back to this grid. So. We have all that set up. It doesn't take any parameters. That's good. Then inside of our draw method, what we're going to want to do is basically just draw one grid every 42. So like one line vertically every time we hit a 42 mark in the vertical direction, and then one line every time we hit a 42 so that we have these 42 by 42 squares going across our entire window. So we will say um, inside of here, the start, We'll say float start x and do that in a second and then float start y. So basically, how do we get the start x? Well, we know it's the camera's x and then wherever the first 42 mark from that camera's x is. So we'll say start x equals the camera.x, camera.position.x. And then we're going to say over 42. And then we're going to say math.floor. So this will convert it to a solid number then i'm referencing my old code here real quick too we'll say times grid size or grid width and then we'll say minus the camera's position dot x that way we get it in relative to zero zero so we're just sort of doing that manually because this isn't actually going to be submitted to the render this is going to be drawn directly um and i'll show you what all that means too in just a second so what's it saying here we have a double so we'll just cast this to a float. Uh, start Y is gonna be very similar. We'll say float math.floor camera.position.y over 42 times grid height minus camera.position.y. If we wanted to be really specific, we could change this to over grid width and this to over grid height, which is good because we get rid of those magic numbers, which are never good. Okay, and then once we have that, we will begin to draw all the lines. So we will say uh, for int column equals zero until column is less than or equal to the number of Y lines column plus plus. 
and then we'll go up here and then we'll say uh, private and number of Y lines equals, and I'll just do like 10 for now. Uh, we may need to increase or decrease that too. We'll see. We'll say g2.draw and then we'll say new line 2d.float. So this means we get ultra precision, as ultra as you can get with uh, Java's um, graphics library and stuff. But we'll say draw and then uh, start x and then we'll say zero to start x and the bottom which are some variables we will get in a second. And then we'll say start X plus equals grid width. So the bottom, I mean, that's basically just the uh, bottom of the screen, but that can actually change a little bit. Uh, say constants dot screen height. And that should be good. And then we need to import this real quick. So this is basically saying, okay, we have our start X, which is the first X position that we want to draw the first line. And then we say, okay, draw a line starting from there, zero. So start X zero, the top of the screen to that same X, Y, and then the screen height, which is the bottom of the screen. So start X and then screen height, which should draw a bunch of vertical lines. Let's see what happens when we do this. We get nothing. <laughs> that's great. Let's see what's wrong with this real quick. And that's because we never even set this up. So let's go to the level editor scene real quick. Uh, we're going to need a grid in here. So we'll say grid, grid, and then inside of here, we'll say uh, grid equals a new grid. Don't need anything. Then we'll go all the way down to here. After we render everything, we'll say grid dot draw G2. And then down here, after we update everything, it's so like grid dot update uh, DT. <laughs> okay, DT, there we go. So let's do this one more time. And then we should get our lines drawn vertically and we get this thing. Are we in the wrong scene? Nope. Level editor scene. Okay. What's this thing? So it's because we're actually initializing it a little too soon. We should change this. Instead of doing it right here, we will do it inside of our init function. This is the reason we have this init function too, is because sometimes things don't get initialized in the proper order. And then we have one more error. Let's see what this is. And so like I was saying, we actually need to swip, swap some things around. So right now, the if we trace the execution, um, so we go to our window, what happens is we go into here. If you hit control and then click on a function, it'll actually take you to that function in IntelliJ. So basically we say current scene equals a new level editor scene. We go into here. This says super dot scene. We click here. This says the name. It sets up the name, the camera, the game objects, the render. But then before it actually uh, finishes that, it calls init. And then that calls the init in whichever base scene. So it calls this init. It's a bad thing because if we remember what initially started this trace was this thing. So current scene never actually gets set. So what we should do is say current scene equals a new scene and then say current scene dot init and then do the same thing down here instead of going through all that abstract and then we'll go to our scene class and remove it from here. We should not call that within the, the constructor because that's not right. Okay, let's run this one more time. There we go. And we get some lines going across the screen just like this. That's great. Um, and that's just an important thing about like, be really sure about the way, uh, you're constructing your objects. Be really sure about the order that it's executing everything too, because you can run into problems like this and have no idea what's happening. Let's go back to that grid class now. And we will increase the number of Y lines cause we don't have enough to let's try 19 cause I'm too lazy to switch it to 20. <laughs> okay. Well now we need to. So 29, let's see what happens there. And we need like one more, 30. Is that good? Almost, let's do one more, just in case, 31. There we go, that's perfect. And then, whoops, we'll say private int, whoops, number of x lines equals, and then we'll do 31 too, because why not? Uh, we'll start with 10, we'll, we'll increase that to whatever we need to. Okay, and then for, this okay remember i put instead of screen height bottom the reason i did that is because if you notice these lines actually go right through the ground that's not nice <laughs> we want them to stop at the ground so what we can do is we can go into our update method and actually figure out where the ground height or where the ground is um so or actually we can do it right here too we'll go up here and then we'll just say float 
bottom equals, and then we'll say math.min. So whatever smaller, the constants, whoops, constants dot ground height, not ground height, uh, the constants dot ground y, or the ground y minus the camera's position y. I'm referencing my old code right now. That's why I'm looking over to. Okay, so the ground y minus the camera's position dot y because we need that in relative to zero, zero, or the constant slash screen height. So, whoops, right here. Or we say constants dot screen height. And that should get us the actual bottom of the screen. Let's change this real quick, or like where the ground is or the bottom of the screen. Let's see what happens when we change that. And expect a semicolon, put a semicolon right there. Okay, there we go, cool, worked perfectly. That's always nice. <laughs> so it stops right at the ground, which is exactly what we would want because we don't want it going through the ground. That's just not cool. And then let's go and we will draw the horizontal lines now. So for int row equals zero until row is less than or equal to the number of x lines, say row plus plus. And then we will say if level at, or we'll say if the cameras, cameras, positions, y plus whatever the current y is that we are on. So start y is less than constant dot ground height. So ground y. So if the camera's position y plus the start y, if we're still below that ground y, uh, we will draw the horizontal line. So then we'll say draw a new line 2D dot float. And we'll say zero to start y and then constants dot screen width to the start y. Yeah, because the y stays the same and we're just changing the zero or the x position. And we'll say start y plus equals grid height. Okay, let's run this real quick and we should get 10 lines going down, which we do. Let's increase that to 20. See how that looks. That looks good, cool. And I think that should cover down there. We'll find out in just a second. Okay, uh, one more thing. I want to change the color. I don't like that color. <laughs> so let's say g2 dot set stroke. Uh, the stroke and the color. And I'll say new basic stroke 1f. So just make sure that the stroke is only one pixel wide, uh, the line width. And then we'll say g2 dot set color. And I'll say a new color. Whoops, new color. And then I'm going to say 0.2f, 0.2f. 0.2f, 0.5f. So semi-transparent and pretty light. There we go. And then we get this nice little grid. Okay, cool. So that's all working great. And it's always going to be drawn in rel uh, relative to the camera and the window. So we don't have to worry about like where it is. The grid will always be exactly where all the 42 marks are, no matter where the camera is, no matter where the window is, which is exactly what we want. Now we want to implement the middle mouse button so that when we click the middle mouse, and drag and actually moves the camera around. So let's do that real quick. So we're gonna create one more component up here and this is going to be our camera controls. And I like abstracting this stuff away because this is purely related to just controlling the camera. It's really easy to find stuff if you name things like this too. Uh, when you're going back through your code and like, oh, where did I put this? So we'll say this extends the component, hit Alt Enter, and let's say public uh, override public void update double dt and then we'll have uh, we actually don't need to draw methods we'll just leave that empty and then we will say uh, public camera controls and then we'll say <clears throat> we're going to need a couple of floats so we'll say private float previous mouse x and the previous mouse y inside here we will set these to zero and previous my equals 0.0, .0. Then we will go down to the update method and we will say if <clears throat> the window.mouse listener, so window.getWindow. And is this going to work right? Yeah, I think that is. Okay, so if the window.getWindow.mouse listener dot mouse pressed, so if the mouse is pressed and the window.getWindow.mouse listener, <clears throat> I'm actually going to move this to a new line too, dot mouse button equals, and then we're gonna say mouse button, no, mouse event, 
dot button two, so that's the middle mouse button, <clears throat> then we want to move the, the camera. So we'll say float DX equals how far do we want to move it? We'll say window dot get window dot mouse listener dot X plus, and then we'll say the window dot mouse listener, whoops, dot get window dot mouse listener dot DX minus the previous mouse's X. So, whoops, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing curly braces there too. We don't need that. If you recall, uh, DX inside of our mouse listener basically records how far the screen the mouse has dragged across. So we're basically saying the window and then X stores the initial start position of that. So we'll say it's uh, DX is equal to the initial start position plus how far we've traveled in the X position minus wherever the previous mouse's X was. The previous mouse will get set to. Uh, we're going to do basically the same thing for DX. So I'm going to go here and then just copy that, change this all to Y's. So change that to Y, change that to Y, change that to Y, and change that to Y. And then we will say um, scene, or we'll say window dot get window dot current scene dot get current scene dot camera dot position dot x minus equals dx <laughs> so we're moving it and we do it minus because we need to do it the opposite direction of the way we moved it just feels more natural to me you can change it if you want window dot get window dot get current scene dot camera dot position dot y minus equals dy and then we'll see what happens and then we also can't forget to say previous previous mx equals the window dot get window dot mouse listener dot x plus the window dot get window dot d mouse listener mouse listener dot dx so we just set uh the previous mouse is x whoops control z previous mouse is x and then the previous mouse is y which will just be m y and then y and y there we go let's run this real quick see what happens uh, so if you click the middle mouse button and drag, we should <laughs> be able to drag, but we can't because once again, we forgot to even add this to the level editor scene. So let's go here and then we'll say we have the grid and then we'll say camera controls and then we'll say camera controls and then right after we initialize a new grid, we'll say camera controls equals a new camera controls. There we go. And then we'll go down to our update method. And after we update the grid, we'll say camera controls. Actually, we'll, we'll do this before we update the grid. We'll say camera controls dot update DT. Okay. And then let's go. There we go. And so you notice we can move it up and down, but um, we're running into this problem where we can't really go up and we can't really go down. And that is because we have this up here. So we have this thing that's constraining the camera to match the position of the player. And then we have this thing constraining the camera to the player's Y. So let's actually remove these two. Let's try this again. We should be able to move, uh, there we go, up and down. And then it stops us if we try and go too far down, which is what we want because we don't want to go below the ground. But now you can move around the scene and you'll notice the grid also moves with the camera. So this is the first sort of big step in our UI and creating the whole uh, level editor and being able to add and drag and drop all the things and stuff. So that's good. Um, next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to try and start setting up some buttons possibly. Uh, we might do some other things and then basically having a uh, the object follow the camera so you can like click down here and then drop some objects into the scene and everything. So hopefully that'll be what we do in the next tutorial. If you guys like this, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks. See you. Thank you.